everyone, it's Lisa and Luna from Don't Run With Scissors back with another Technique Tuesday. This is part two to my colored pencil series. Uh, so last week, if you missed it, I did the traditional colored pencils and how to blend uh, using either the color or an odorless mineral spirit, Gamsol, baby oil, or Gooby Gone, um, and what other things you can do with the traditional colored pencils, such as using your embossing folder and rubbing over it like Indian rubbing or when you went to the cemetery as a little kid and you had to do the stone rubbings, something along those lines. Um, and then I showed blending and I, I finished up with a card. Today I'm going to show you colored pencils that are water based. Um, so I have watercolor pencils here. They are a uh, either a wax or an oil based but they include an emulsifier uh, such as soap that allows it to be water soluble so that it will break down once water touches it. There are many different ways to have that happen. Uh, you can use a water brush here. Uh, this has a, a nylon tip. Uh, you can see I've used mine. It's got a dark uh, darkness to it. It hasn't cleaned off very well. Um, but it is filled with water. These do let a lot of water out when you're working so you need to be really careful and have like a blotter side uh, so that you can clean that up. Tim Holtz also has one. Haven't broken into it yet, uh, but someday I'm sure I will. Or you can use just a traditional paintbrush. Uh, you might have some kicking around the house. You never know. Some of your kids' watercolor paint sets. This would work just fine as well. Um, so here I do have a little dish of water. So, because of how we're going to bounce back and forth between what we're doing. So let's get started. Uh, doing watercolor pencils, you do need to be uh, aware of what paper you are using. Again, that's the key to this pretty much whole big technique that they have going on. And watercolor paper comes in two types, hot press and cold press. And it all depends on the tooth of the paper or what kind of texture you want. A cold press paper has a lot of texture, whereas a hot press paper is much smoother and is actually one of the better uh, papers to do watercolor on. So here I have two samples of watercolor paper. This is 140 pound, this is a cold one, and if you were up nice and close you can see that this paper has a lot of texture, there's a lot of rigidity to that paper. This one's a 96 pound paper, watercolor paper. It is a lot uh, more smooth, it's not as smooth as it could possibly be, but again I, I tend to play with both of these so I'm happy in, the, in this zone. Um, and I do like the, the tinge to some of these papers that they come. This kind of got like a gray hue to it. So some of the stuff that I work on, especially with the nature themes, I do like this. On top of this, I also did take a 110 pound piece of cardstock just to show you um, what watercolors will do on that paper as well. So again, the important part to this is the paper and also the ink. You want to make sure you're choosing an ink that is water soluble, that'll stand up to you playing with the water on the paper, uh, that it doesn't give you too much play and spread out and make a mess. So I'll show you on each of these three, you can choose uh, which one works for you. And then on top of it, you can choose a watercolor paper, stamp your image, or emboss your image with a Versamark pad. This is embossed in clear embossing powder and so we're going to finish up with this one. We're going to spend the most time here. So if you have a question about what inks to use, you can go check out this reference sheet that is on my blog under the reference pages and let's get started. So I'm going to start with the cold press paper. I'm using this lily pad stamp. I'm going to zoom in here. The color pencils I have are nothing special. Uh, I picked them up at Hobby Lobby. Of course, everybody makes fun of me for going there, but that's okay. Um, and it, here you go. It's nice, cheap uh, colored pencils. You can spend lots of money, and you can color just normally, um, and you can leave it. But you can see how here, you can see the lines that are in this, in the paper. So let's see if I can get that up there a little. You can see the rigidity, the pencils color covering over it. Colored pencils, uh, the color transfers by abrasion, um, so it's pretty much sitting right on top of the paper. Go up here. Now there's a couple different ways to spread this color out. I'm going to add in a little other green here. And we're going to find some yellow. I color outside the line. That's what I get for looking around, right? All right. So, the magic. I have my water pen. I am going to make sure it's clean over here on the side. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start adding the color. 
and you can see that the watercolor mark uh, pencils just start melting and becoming a nice bright color. If I squeeze this barrel, I'm going to get a blobby mess. And I will do that for you up here. So I'm adding a ton of water, I'm squeezing. You can see the overflow of water and how my image is now getting diluted. The ink's doing okay, but the color, it's, it's erratic and it's, it's coming outside the lines. And I have a lot less control. So that's, that's one concern when using these. You want to make sure that you have a nice light touch on your pencil. You're only asking for water when you want it. Uh, you don't want to keep squeezing. So stay, stay quiet when you're using that. Um, another option you can do is you can color outside the lines. You can use, you can use a water brush as well. S start swirling that out. I didn't clean this, but it does pick the color up. So you can come and you can bring it in. So if you really want to have control of it, you just want to add some lightness or some darkness or shading, you can make your own color palette. You can mix and blend on the other side and all will work. This also works with just a regular, regular paintbrush. So you don't have to have the fancy tools to make it all work. So this is the 140 pound cold paper. Uh, let's move right here real quick to the 96 pound. I'm gonna just do the same thing real quick. Just so you can see the difference. This is a lot smoother. Now on these, you can just color like a crazy person like I am. Because what you can do is you can blend these colors so well with the water. It's hard to say which one I like the best using regular colored pencils and the Gamsol because they just blend so beautifully on their own. But the watercolors, it's just kind of fun. It's almost like being a little kid again. I'm gonna clean this off so there's no pink left in it. And we're just gonna come in. So this is a, not a hot press paper, but it is much closer resemblance of it. And so there's less texture. You're gonna get less of those lines. And I'll hold the two up when we're done, so you can see. I'm not gonna make a hot mess out of this one by adding the extra water. Of course, I did color out of the lines a little. Squeeze if you need, if you feel you need some extra water. I do recommend squeezing off paper, so if you really felt like you needed some extra water, come down to the corner and then go back up. but you can get some great color. You can, I would let this dry. You can go back in and you can shade, um, add more color to it. But these are the two differences between the poundage of the paper. This has a lot more texture. Um, the cold paper, they, they really are easy to work with. And if you're a texture person, you can see all this water swirling around here that I made a mess. That's because I squeeze too hard. Don't squeeze too hard. Um, but you can definitely see the difference uh, depending on if you're a texture person or not. If you want it nice and smooth, the, the lighter the poundage, the better you're going to be. You're going to be happier. Uh, if you like that little extra lines in it to show that it's watercolor paper, you go for the cold paper. So real quick, just on cardstock, again, you're going to want, eh, picked the wrong color. That's all right. It's a sick lily pad. Um, if you're on cardstock, you probably are going to do better with a, a, a heavier poundage. Um, so, because pap this paper will absorb um, water, so you need to be very careful with a nice light touch so that you're not making too much of a mess. But it, these, this will be your smoothest surface. It doesn't necessarily help break the color down as much as a watercolor paper. It doesn't really just, it just doesn't pop as much. But for little details, I think it's great. And if that's all you have kicking around, hard to deny that it doesn't work. So that's the just regular cardstock. Again, this, this water, it will absorb the paper. Good idea to tape it down if you're doing something so it doesn't bubble up. Um, this one didn't come through. I didn't really spend too much time on it. But I would tape it down so that it doesn't bubble and make you crazy so when it comes, it's all squirrely and not together. So. Here is my stamped image, and here's my, my lines, so you're going to color in your lines. 
this just gives a whole nother look. Uh, some people like to emboss in clear, some like to emboss in white. I had clear nice and handy, so that is what I stuck with. And we'll just finish up with this. do all the colors now. Some people like really do enjoy making the palette off paper. Um, you can really blend your colors nicely. And then you can fussy cut these out. Or if you have a brother scan and cut, you can uh, allow that to cut it out for you. Let me tell you, that was one of the best presents I ever bought myself. And I We'll be demoing that at some point in my life when I get a little more confident with it. So let's go in here. Oh, we'll use this. We'll wipe off real quick and give it a little squeeze. So now it's going to be embedding into with the embossing inks. Uh, gives it a nice boundary. Sometimes if you get a little heavy handed with the water, the embossing powder will help it from creeping over the image, coloring outside the lines, as it were. Clean that up real quick. Go back into the pink. I am not squeezing. I haven't added any more water. You can just see the color breaking down and you can go back in and make it as light or as dark as you want. I'm sure the camera isn't picking the image up quite as well because it looks a little murky with the flowers. I'm a big fan of stamping in black instead of uh, the clear. If you're using a darker paper it's a, it, it works out great but definitely the the dark ink really does project the image much better than doing a white on white or clear on white. But again, it depends on what your project is. So what I perhaps should have done is put this on a dark piece of paper so you could have seen the difference. Um, I don't think they, I've never seen a dark watercolor paper, but perhaps they make them. Not formally an artist. Um, but yeah, so here are your watercolors. There's a lot of options you can have with these. It's nice to just come in and you can break the color down at any point and add more uh, as soon as I kind of tend to let it dry a little bit and you can go right over and and add I'm just gonna throw purple in here because I can um, you can build the colors you can't build these colors as much as the other wax or the traditional color pencils so be pretty set on what color you're putting in there with the water while you can go in and add more especially if you actually make it wet on this side before putting it in that's a good idea um, but going right back on the image is gonna be a little tricky so I hope you learned something today and uh, tune in again next week. We're getting ready for Valentine's Day. We're actually going to be doing a, a video we had already done uh, on making a Valentine's Day present, but we're going to spice it up a little. So tune in next week. I hope you uh, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.